without the further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the Love Life Legacy Podcast. Love Life Legacy Podcast. Love Life Legacy Podcast. It's a podcast. It's a podcast. Hey! We desire to share our love, life, and legacy with the hopes that it inspires, compels, and challenges others. We're all about growth and leveling up, and that is what we aim to do. Now, something that we would like everyone to understand is that this podcast is based on our opinions, framed from our life's experiences, and perspectives. This is not to say that we are right and you're wrong. This is merely to challenge and elevate our lives, your life, and the conversations that surround the topics we speak on. Welcome to the Love Life Legacy Podcast. So I played them keys just now. I know. I played I them you. keys. Did a great job. Welcome back to, to another episode, episode 74 of the Love, Love Life Legacy, Legacy Podcast. Podcast. Hey. It is so good to be back with you all. Mm-hmm. It is so good to be back in the midst of such a divine and upstanding and righteous well. following and just i want to hit you guys with a round of applause for always being with us and continuing to rock with us and <laughs> that's we, right babe, who, what, you, what you doing not well you was about to preach so i was just you know getting my voice together don't make me put it on back you up. i got hold on you think i'm playing <laughs> You think I'm playing? No. I got it. I got it. I I'll did, put it on. I mean, I thought you had called the people righteous, isn't it? Yes. Uh, so I was, mm, mm, uh, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> you ready today? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Again. The Love Life Legacy Baptist. Welcome back. Love Life Legacy Baptist. To the Love Life Legacy Baptist Podcast, Episcopalian oh. and Boston Baptist <laughs> Church. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop. Let me turn this off. <laughs> Welcome back, y'all. It's good to be back on the mics with you guys. Um, uh, hopefully for not too long. Just yeah. you know, a quick, quick in and out, no, you know, conversation. Late. Wanted to hit on a topic that has been, uh, seemed like it's been uh, taking social media by storm. Um, a lot of people have been talking about it, <sighs> and it's a pretty interesting topic. What do you think, honey? I think it's interesting. I'm pretty sure you guys heard about the doubling down of the Daneros. Mm-hmm. Hope I said their name right. Doricos so. doubling down with the Doricos. So the TLC uh, family um, of 14 uh, children. They had multiples. Um, this couple, and they're getting a divorce. Um, that we're hearing that they're getting a divorce, and there's some. You know, uh, I just recently saw a video about a lady explaining that. She believes that because they are in Los Angeles, that the divorce could happen quickly or maybe they're already divorced. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure um, because, you know, different videos flying. I didn't fact check anything. But what Jonathan has on the screen here is that um, after 19 years and 14 children, Dion will pay just eleven hundred dollars. Just a uh, one thousand one hundred and sixty six dollars in child support for a month. Just just one thousand one hundred. You, you're putting a just in front of that. Yes, because for 14 kids, <laughs> that's a lot of bread <laughs> for 14 kids. No, no, I get it. But that's still a lot of money for 14 <laughs> kids. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. That's that's just let me, let me do the little math because I should have did this before. I'm about to do Medea math. This yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Medea do some crazy math. What is that per child? That is eighty three dollars and twenty eight cents. Now, mind you, what I can feed one of our kids off of eighty three dollars a month, a month, just feed. Uh, yeah, yeah. F- feed mm-hmm. off eighty. What they eating? Stew chicken and rice with some <laughs> corn. I okay, can throw in that. What what kind of what kind of pack of chicken? Legs for one child. So legs run about you know good fifteen dollars. No now. legs don't because Walmart I can buy I can find a pack for about seventy dollars and I can stew seven, those legs dollars? seven to eight dollars. Then I can stew those legs down. Mm-hmm. That's going to last for a few days. Days? Yeah, for a few days. Our children are going to eat refrigerated <laughs> stew chicken for days? But you think about it. If I compile the $83. Divided by you want 31 days, 30 days, or 28 <laughs> days. <laughs> 30, 31, 31. Okay, I'm going to do 30. I'm going to meet in the middle. 30, 30. So that's $2.77. <laughs> 
They eat noodles and noodles. I, I ain't gonna lie to you. There's a reason why he's only a, probably um, made to for pay. his income or whatever. Yeah. I'm not sure, yeah. but 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 if we if he don't... is only paying a thousand one hundred and sixty six dollars in child support Again, a month. We didn't fact check. So well, I don't yeah, know. somebody else maybe it's put a eleven thousand. Maybe, but if he's only paying that little bit, and we're <laughs> saying that he's only paying that little bit, they had a whole TV um, show. That's all he got. She's getting majority of everything listen i'm telling you if he only has to pay that i think this is my assumption he walked away with little of nothing as and, he should and because he did he has to pay what he can afford on his exactly own. that's what i'm assuming but that's a lot of money bro so in his situation i mean a lot of time not a lot of money so in his situation it was it's not cheaper to keep her. It, it, it was. I'm pretty sure he would have to contribute more a month living in the house with them and their kids than him having to contribute leaving. Say that one more time. It's, I'm slow. <laughs> it appears that he would have to contribute more living in the house than him living outside the house. How you figure? Because I'm pretty sure if he live in the house, he's going to be spending more than $1,100 a month. Yeah, but it's their money. So you can't look at it as a... Listen. You can't look at it as I'm spending more. They're sharing. It's their money. I think it should be illegal to divorce after you had 14 kids. No, for real. <laughs> it's like there is no divorce. Yeah, it's like... You either stay with her or go to jail. Pretty much. <laughs> like, what are you talking... Like, Unless nah. she left the kids with him. No, no, because she because he's paying child support, so no, she got him. No, I am of the belief. Go ahead, and say what you believe. That about. I don't believe. Stand on the island by yourself. I don't care. I can stand on this island hey, by myself. Hey, go ahead, Gilligan. I don't believe. <laughs> I don't believe in single motherhood. Right. I just really don't. I know. And it's nothing against single moms. You know, you guys. You know, do the thing. I'm a product of a single mom. Yes. You better not be talking about them. I'll call <laughs> no, my mama. Uh -uh. No, I <laughs> I respect it, but I was saying for me, mm -hmm. you know, I just I just can't do that. Yeah, you know, um, and not to say like God forbid something happening, you know, and that's something different. But for us to divorce, you know, and I'm to raise the kids alone, no, I'm your children. Then that would make you a single mother if we would divorce. No, but so what do you mean by God forbid? Maybe I don't understand. Oh, because the only way we out this thing is do death do us part. Oh, because you didn't explain me, <laughs> oh, God forbid. Oh, my sorry. Yeah. That's why I was like, okay, God forbid something happening, you know, the, the to something you. Ha something, okay, I got that you, got That would you, make you, me you, a you. single mother. Okay, I got you, got you. But if you got breath in your body, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> and we don't work out. <laughs> yeah, it ain't no going away. Those kids are yours. I, I know you told me that a long time ago. Long time ago. And I just really think... From just my perspective and just, you know, taking notes from different friends that I have, family members, you know, uh, when my mom had divorced my biological father before marrying my my stepfather, who I refer to as dad, you know, watching my sister just, you know, watching it was just like, you know, I, and I see single males, you know, like my brother, you know, he had a daughter, he has a daughter and I would feel as though men get help from other women a lot easier in raising their children than some women get with you know another man coming in to help with their children of course you know yeah. what i'm saying and you know and i don't know i just feel as though if it was a standard that you know men are to keep their children i think there would be you know less single parent hit on both sides let me ask you a question maybe that's just my perspective and it could be your perspective well, it is my it, perspective. Yeah, and it is your perspective. Not saying yeah. your perspective is wrong, not saying it's right, but it's just your perspective. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. What if she's the one that filed for divorce? Then what? I still think that legally the children should always reside with their father. But hold on. That's for not me. fair. Why? No, no, that's not fair. Because what if, and this is the a scenario that we're throwing out. We, we're just this playing is the not, what ifs. Yes, this right? is not real. What if? What if? He didn't want to split the family up. Then and she he should, wanted, then and she he can't. wanted to stay. Oh, then she would have to work it out. Or but, she leaves. If it becomes toxic, I think the woman should be the one that leaves. Yeah, but you know, w women have more power when it comes to custodial battles than I men know. Do. That's why I'm saying legally, from the birth of the child, when you establish that who is the father, 
I think the father legally should have more rights than a mother. I got what you're saying. Yeah. But you know that ain't how it is. I, it's not how it is. Yeah. But that's how it used to be way, 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 way back in the day. Yeah. That if a woman wanted to leave her family, she would have to leave her children. You got to think about it. Women didn't even have rights. They couldn't work at one period of time. So therefore, if a woman did want to move on, she would move on without you I know, got what you're saying. Without her children. But what I'm saying for that is that you got, I'm thinking about the life of the child. You mm-hmm. know, even statistically speaking, you know, single fathers, you know, that raise their children have better outcomes than single mothers raising children. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah so statistic, those statistics yeah. and that, you know, and, you know, just the, the home structure, mm-hmm. you yeah, know, just getting into the statistics. Like mm-hmm. You know, even if something should happen, you know, Children statistically are in better care of males. Mm-hmm. And that's not to put sh- shade on mothers or whatever. It's just statistically speaking, mm-hmm. you know. And I just think that if we have those types of statistical results, I think that we should f- conform to those because they have just the better outcomes. And um, and that's pretty much it. And I think, you know, children being with their fathers, mm-hmm. w- you know, would hold everybody to such uh, I think a higher accountability because mm-hmm. making single mothers is not decreasing, you know, how much people are producing children mm-hmm. and how much more or more children are birthed into like and these single and homes. And, and I think, hold on, I'm I think sorry. if men have to deal with children more than what they do when they're like, I think they'll be more careful how they spread their seed. Okay. Because and that child right. coming home with me, well, I got to raise them. <laughs> yeah. You're right. And I, I think we need oh, to like, separate. One other, po- one other point. Okay. And I mm-hmm. think it would make women more accountable before they get pregnant to know that, you know, my baby is not my baby. I think it would help deal with mindsets of both parties. Right. Because the, now in the way that we deal with it, you know, or oh, that's just that her baby, you know, I don't know if I'm the father. I don't know if I'm that. I just feel as though we switch the dynamics a little bit and make it legal that there will be more accountability on both ends. I'm not going to be so quick, hopefully, to spread my legs, you know, or because, you know, this is this man's seed that I'm carrying. Right. You know, before I put my seed in her Man, that baby gonna have to come home with me because we ain't married. You know, I just think people would second guess. So sorry, go ahead. Gotcha. Um, so I think we need to do a good job at separating the pool of people that we're talking about. Okay, go ahead. Because I think that you conflated a bunch of them and oh, put sorry. them all in the same pool. Okay, go ahead. So when I think about this guy who is a husband and a father, he is in a pool. He's in a pool. And then the guy that I'm thinking, who that I know that you're talking about, who needs to be careful with, with sharing his seed, he's in a total different pool. Not in necessarily. Class. Yeah, he is. You, you've been married 19 mind. years, and you have 14 children. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So me and you have been married going on 18 years, mm-hmm. you know. You know, red flags or whatever you went through in your marital problem that lead to a divorce is not just something that's just coming up out of the blue. Mm-hmm. You know, like listening to people's testimonies or watching the show because I didn't watch the show. You know, he obviously had an issue helping with the kids when they only had 11, you know. Mm-hmm. So there seemed to have been a pattern of, you know, of issues. I don't know. Maybe he just got comfortable with the show, you know, making money. So, you know, the more they have kids, the more publicity they got. I don't know. I would rather see it and and uh, and come to my own conclusion about his actions instead okay. of listening to what somebody well, else said. Again, because I'm if you listen to what that um, uh, Kate plus eight, if you listen to her tell it, my man was oh, John. He John was, and Kate plus eight. But, John was the victim in that whole thing. I know. I so get that. it wasn't. I'm I'm very careful with hearing people's perspective. If I didn't, if I wasn't able to, to see like, it watch the show. and be able to gain my own understanding for it, because he probably wanted the help and it looked different, or maybe he couldn't because there was a prior maybe commitment. Maybe he didn't want that many or, children. And you know how, or she made him choose at the time, but she, he already had let it known, be known that, hey, I had a prior engagement already, and I know you may be overwhelmed, but I have to follow this commitment, and I'll be back to help you in a second. So again. There could be a lot, you, a different dynamic. Uh, there could be on. a whole lot going on. But, so I just know that within... Uh, reference to the law that you were talking about. If it was a law. If it w- if it was a law that we mm-hmm. were talking about. I know that that law could be helpful for a specific group of men. Yeah. But I just, I don't know if it would apply to and men that wouldn't. have a made up mind who has the heart and spirit of husband, who has the ability to lead a family, who has 
uh, gave an effort to create a family, they should have their own separate set of rules. I mean, I and embedded that. in the law. But for those other ones that can't show commitment, that can't show loyalty, that can't keep their thing to the, I won't say thing. That sounds so immature. <laughs> that that can't keep their member to themselves. Then maybe the law should apply to them. I just want to make sure I separate. Them. I That's understand, all I'm but the law don't work like that. But you have to separate them because you can't. No, treat, because you can't, you can't separate men. You can't men separate. Like a monolith. Well, you. But we do that to women all the time. We can't. Because, I don't. Because well, I'm saying this. I'm talking about the law itself. You know, of that. You know, a woman has. You know, primary as prime was in most states automatically deem if she's not married. Uh, custodial parent mm -hmm. that's implying that you know all women do right by that custodial parent mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and there's some that does wrong by that yeah. you know it makes it harder for the good fathers because we see that all the time that mm -hmm. has you know trifling baby mamas as well but the law just don't only work for the good single moms that mm -hmm. really try to you know do what they're going to do so i'm just saying for everybody just to be careful yeah that's true in their case i don't know what careful looks like I don't know who filed. I don't know what, what left. All I just right. know that at, after 19, the, and this, this is, uh, I, I brought this up in a conversation I had a while ago. Um, I don't know what it is about that time frame. It's usually the 20 to 25 year time frame. They made it to 19, but it's close enough. So I'll say 20. Okay. I don't know what it is about that time. Are you nervous? Well, it's disheartening. I'm not going to be nervous. I'm just going to remain focused. It's disheartening to hear so many people make it to 20, to 20 years, years and then divorce. just it's like 20. You know how long when I try to think about back 20 years of my life, 20 years mm -hmm. like I was there. I knew you were there. <laughs> I had hair. I was a lot younger. Just 20 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> I looked a lot younger. I didn't have as many gray hairs in, in my beard. You didn't have any gray hairs 20 years ago. No, not, not at all. I was youthful. I didn't have I gray had hairs. muscles. I had a slim you still figure. You muscles. Well, fig I mean, like, I have, I have muscles on a, on a dad-like body. 20 the remnants. years. remnants. Right. But then <laughs> I have muscles on an active, you know, stature. Like, it's just... I don't know. Years 20 time. years is a very long time, man. And to try to put that in perspective of being with another person it's and doing life with that person, it's it's the 20 years. It's for the me. 14 kids for me. Like, you mean tell you, 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 tell you why it's not? You want me to tell you why it's not the kids? Because if you'd have worked out the 20, the kids was a byproduct of you working out the 20. And the issue that I have is that is that for some reason, for some reason, it's I don't know if they fought. I don't know how hard they fought. And I don't know if they ignored flags that could have been there or was it the limelight that may have gotten into one of their heads. Could have been. But it's worth investing into working out because why throw away put this in terms of a stock option that you've been holding for 20 years or a bond that you've been holding, you know, or a, a home that has gained interest over 20. Like, it's just when you can put material things under the microscope of perspective and reality, yeah. you were like, hey, you need to hold that. This is a long term play. This is an invest and hold. This is not an invest and cash out and and go and invest something else. Right. This is an invest and hold. So you got to know that you're not going to be able to draw down on this and to flip this for no time soon. Hold on to that. We can see the material they don't think each aspect worth of that. To hold. But for this, for something that is. Month internal and eternal the whole have that value and the investment ain't worth it and it's like if you if they had just fixed that then the byproduct called children would have been just fine so you know what brings the mind is something that we teach in our you know marital coaching right? yes my question would be, what was the vision for the family? That's good. You, like, you just sent me a video about that. Yeah. Like, what was what was the vision for the family? Like, was the vision just to have the children? Because it came, you know, it's a gift for that lady to be able to have multiple. Because you know like how that. many. I don't know women, how many. Like, if God she had bless the, natural, the women that couldn't. And hopefully it's not a trigger warning to anybody. But 
there are a lot of women that can't. You know she what I'm saying? Came up with, well, 14. I don't know because I don't know their story. I don't know if that's they true. had. That's true. I've, Let's stop putting I've, a whole lot of sauce on it. But all right. I'm saying is, but it's still so for her God. to b- birth multiple multiples, you know, and her little small frame. My little small frame with carrying my one babies told me up. <laughs> that's true. You know, and so. Your it, one babies. I carry, Your five babies. No, but I had a one. I oh, because she had sex. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, I dropped my ball. We yes. do that. Just, uh, you're just gonna let it go. All right. I need my ball. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, ma'am. <laughs> baby, see, that's why I can't have. Go on, get, I want keep going. The ball. Keep going, baby. Okay. I need my ball. See, and this is why. <laughs> hmm? All right. So back to my point. Since I can't get my ball, um, I think. Let me backtrack because I kind of lost my thought. So, mm-hmm. I think having the vision. Of the house is important. And like you just stated, I sent you a video on that. You know, I don't know if the vision goes beyond just having multiple kids. Like I was saying, you know, I think it's a gift to be able to have, you know, multiple children like that. And like I was saying, you know, me having a small frame and carrying one baby at a time, I can only imagine all of that. Mm -hmm. But I think when we operate in a marriage not intentional, on what our purpose of marriage is Mm -hmm. or maybe our purpose of marriage is short-lived i think that's where divorce set in and i'm only speaking like that because anytime we thought about divorce well i'm speaking for myself anytime i thought about getting a divorce that's the mindset that i was in right you know it's immediately planning a future that doesn't include you it's immediately thinking about you know um the things that I can accomplish without you. I'm immediately changing the vision that we may have talked about, you know, our whole life or our plans or whatever it is, because now I need to see something else further that doesn't include you. Mm -hmm. And to be at a 19 year mark, like this couple, you know what I'm saying? You know, I just think that it had to have been something there that was big enough to either one party or another that that the future together just didn't make sense anymore. I, I get it. And that's what irre- irreconcilable differences. You want some of this? That's what irreconcilable differences is. But that don't mean that I have to agree with it, that I got to like it, that I, I just would rather people fight for what they had agreed to in the beginning. Because if it made sense at the I do's at year zero. But people change. And I know. We all change. Our body changes. I had hair 20 years. I keep. I had hair 20 years ago. You had the hair less than 20 years ago. That's true. But I'm going back 20 because they were married back then 20. So I just had to learn and adapt to who this Jonathan was. But I didn't like divorce this guy. I'm still him. I'm still me. It's different when you have to like because work it I out with somebody. You. Yeah, with yeah, I can't control else. you. Yeah, yeah, but you because you have choice, and because I can't control you, I rather not deal with you. Give me a word that defines that. But I'm gonna say it again. Because you have choice, and I can't control you, I would rather not deal with you because I can't control you. I don't know what word you think about, but what that's word? not love. Okay, we. You can't you can't find a word. You the doctor. I thought you'd be able to find something. I'm not the doctor of the words. You are the, you the, you are a a person that got a dr I attached do. to her name. I gotta think about it. Oh, what word? I don't know. I feel like you answered it in the in the word is 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 the fact that you can't control the person. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know of could any it, singular word right could now. It, could it be um, controlling? <laughs> yeah, that's what I just said. I just feel, I, 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 I feel like that. That it is, um, you know, a lack of control. And in my understanding, well, let me define the word first. But in my understanding, it's a form of hate as well. Mm. Um, it's a bunch of definitions gonna come up with that for that. You'll be reading for a while, baby. No. Um, what are you trying to find for hate? Yes. Yeah, I just 
Well, because I remember reading this definition for hate before. Use politely to express one's regret or embarrassment at doing something, mm. right? And when you can't, like, control somebody, it's like this almost, and maybe another word, you, you resent them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, That's a good word yeah, for it. So you express one's regret or embarrassment, you know, oh, I was with this it. person or, you know, you know, ooh, everything he has get on my nerves. Oh, I don't want to see in public with him. That's oh, a good word you know, for it, resentment. That's you know, a really good word for it. I think that comes in at, and, um, and it's better, it's better to not deal with you because you can't have, it's selfishness, it's, uh, pride it's 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 so many words that i think we could attach to that but it i don't think we can attach love to it though i'll tell you that much i mean it's a it's a lack of love you know um, resentment cool. you know a feeling of angry displeasure at something regarded as wrong insult or injury there's several different definitions for that um a negative emotional reaction Yes. You know, and all those types of things. But, you know, again, I don't know what take people to their breaking point, you know, of or what happens in, you know, different people's relationships. But all I know is that to have 14 kids together, mm -hmm. you know, I yeah, and I know that's that's your focal point, because the kids are the ones that seems like they're going to, I guess, struggle any, and suffer well, I, any my parent that's raising 14 kids you know as a custodial to me, parent to is me, a lot they would have been taken woman. care of male or woman yes they would have been taken care of if you'd have just fixed the marriage man honestly it just fix the marriage well, or or how you how about you do what we hear what so many other people do stay for the kids people act like that's so wrong it's like i just is your is is your life bigger than you is your the reason why you got into the relationship that you're in and the result of the relationship that you're in is that not bigger than you i don't think people see it like it that. is because bro, it's a lot of people you. enter relationships so haphazardly it's bigger than you once you lay down you're not in a marriage you find this this woman attractive y'all have a relationship for a little while and the child comes out of that relationship y'all hookups is not the focal point anymore the child becomes the focal point which makes the child bigger than whatever y'all had going on and i think people feel so, so when you put, that way is when you put that into perspective through the lens of what these people had going on their family that marriage that unit that household, those kids are bigger than whatever they were going on, going through in that house. Y'all, y'all can hate each other, but y'all staying together in this house that y'all built in this home for this TV show. I don't care if y'all got to fake it till y'all make it. And then y'all got to go and, sh uh, and, and smoke when the cameras are off or drink when the cameras are off. But y'all going to be a happy family when these cameras rolling. We got to well, keep this when going. The camera's not rolling. And when the camera's not rolling, y'all going to be a happy family until these kids, everybody is gone. Like, I think that's what the older generation used to understand. Because the older generation wasn't as selfish as we are. That's the problem. Because I'm going to assume they're around our age. If he's 53 and she's 43 or something like that. Okay, so they are they're not millennials. Enough. They are Gen Z. Gen I mean, they're at the end. They're Gen Z, we're millennials, right? Yeah. 37. I'm going to say I'm there. My birthday right around the corner. Okay. Um, millennials, Gen Z. They should have the grit and the determination to stick that one out. I'm sorry. I can't even shoot them no bail. I can't shoot them no excuse. No, I'm sorry. Think about people you know in their 40s right now. It, it, something happened with the tap water. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> it's the tap water. Something, something yeah, happened. something was, was that the, tap water. The switch. And when, when all the know. bottled water came out, something happened. I guess it was the tap water. <laughs> I was drinking water out the holes. So maybe that's what it was. But I'm good, though. You good? I'm good, though. <laughs> they should have drinking water out the holes. Huh? I just, I, they're not that far removed from the generation that you were talking about with grandmas having such a selfless understanding in life that was willing to well, give he, out to others. Who's the he? He's 53, so. And he, that's fine. He's closer, they're, they're cl he's closer, right? 
I, and again, he probably will, may have not been throwing a whole lot of bail, not bail, but oh. a whole lot of in in not inflection. I'm assumptions. losing the word assumptions on this whole thing because we don't know what happened, right? Mm -hmm. He probably was the one that not didn't even file for divorce. She probably for, filed, or Let she me see if I can find she out. you know filed, uh, and he did. I don't know. Who knows? All I know is they should have came and had a meeting of the minds with. The, the council, the, their council of Nicaea, which was their family and All their right. parents, All right. <laughs> and saying, "Listen here, it ain't no cutting out, it ain't no quitting, it ain't no leaving. Y'all been married nineteen, you got fourteen. There ain't no separating right now. Y'all have a whole city. Y'all don't even have a village. Y'all got know. a city to raise. <laughs> you don't. You can't cut the lights out on the city." You got to keep this infrastructure working, and it takes both of y'all to do it. Heck, it takes a, a multitude of people to do it. Let alone now, you take one of which is the most one of one of the most pivotal and crucial pieces, which is the dad out of the equation. What are you talking? If you don't get back in that bedroom, what are we talking about, bro? The reason why for me this hits home, and it seems like it's a little bit sensitive and maybe a little bit a little bit trigger, triggering and putting a little bit of sauce on it, you know, pod, 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 gotta, you know, perform yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Is because in the real world, when we are not on these microphones, we see and hear these situations all the time. People come to us to try to get help in coaching about situations like this yeah. all the time. So it's like, yes, we're potting. We're talking about people that we don't even know. I'm putting a whole lot of character on it and stuff like this. But at the end of the day, this is a real thing. Karen and divorced. my question thing is, my, my question is, is your not, if your life and the decision you made to do life with that person and the family you created not bigger than the pain that you may be feeling, which is a momentary thing that could you could overcome with a little bit of dedication, a little bit of work, a little bit of will, a little bit of cooperation that you guys can just get through and see yourselves on the other side of that. So you can look back and show a little bit of gratitude and appreciation for you coming through that. Every test and heartache and hardship that I know in my life is like that. It hurts while you're going through it. And you can't even see what the other side looks like. But you appreciate not escaping what that trial and heartache looks like when you now are on the other side and you're made better because you did not forfeit that opportunity. You can look back. That's a teachable moment. Now you can now share your experience with other people. You can be a helping hand, not only to yourself, but to others that have seen your example. And that just reinforces who you are as a person and their relationship could have been reinforced if they whatever they had going on infidelity irreconcilable differences i don't like the type of person you became you change you don't listen to me you don't let me be the leader of the house you're not submissive we we hear it all all of those can be worked out if you can see the family being bigger than what whatever you're going through Put your cares to the side, bro. It's like for the greater good, for the family, do what you got to do. You said to death, do you part for a reason? What does that mean? What does that look like? Especially when you want it to die right now when it when it feels like it needs to be put in the grave. What does that look like? It looks like you getting up. Wiping the sweat and the blood off from all of the verbal attacks that have probably have been thrown. Wiping the dirt off because you guys have been tussling in the argument, argumentative mud. You guys take a pause for a second. Have a meeting of the minds. Mm -hmm. You know, clean yourselves up. And then talk about how did we get here? And then find commonality so you guys don't ever get back there again. That's what it looks like. So that you can keep the unit together it's the you it's bigger than you 19 years and 14 kids was not enough for her and him regardless of her wanting to be out or him wanting to be out to say we ain't leaving each other it appears to be mutual and they're splitting custody of the younger children that it, it just it hurts my heart, bro. Oh, they, only, it, they only got one kid that's eighteen. It 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 hurts my heart, and I, I mean, I I, I hope I'm sorry if I offend anybody that tried and it didn't work. 
No, it's not. It not. It can't work every time, yeah, right? It takes two people. It takes two people that wake up to make a decision to choose, choose each, each other, other every day. day. So I understand that it's not a perfect world, and some things don't work out. That's right. What if you can? And it's not been roses. With it's not been. It's like we've been through a lot of stuff. Like just she wanted to divorce me before we got married. <laughs> <laughs> All I said was. Honey, if it doesn't work out, we can always she get a divorce. She won. And then we got married. I said, girl, if you don't come back to get I was married. easing his heart because I didn't want him to feel, you, you know, pressure. I, I said, girl, if you don't come downstairs and get married and, sh- and shut all that. I was mad. I was hot. But I still, we still went downstairs and we got married. We'll work this out afterwards. But I know <laughs> that family, family, because we already had a daughter, a precious nine-month-old daughter. Mm-hmm. And we knew that we wanted to start a family. And I didn't let that pain, even though she gave me an out, she gave oh, me an I out. because I had stall marriage. Because Jonathan wanted to get married before I even had the baby yeah, and all of that. She gave me an out. And I could have took the out because I could have allowed the offense yes. to creep in and harden my heart. And be like, you know what, you're right. We ain't got to. And told our family to leave and all that stuff. I said, no, we deal with that later. Let's go downstairs. And I was hot. I said my vows and my face was tight. But I said them. <laughs> I said him. And we worked it out, man. That among so many other things. Well, because you thought I was rejecting you. Yes. But I thought I was relieving you. I understand that. Regardless of what the interpretation was at the time, I could have allowed the offense to force a decision to separate us. But I didn't know. You fight, dog. You just... I want family. Family is the cornerstone of everything. Period. And... In my little 19-year-old heart, even though I couldn't have explained it as well as I can explain it now on this side, because I've been through some things, I knew that we had to get married, man. We had to create a family. We had to start it. And thank God for it. Thank God for it. That, and that's all I'm saying. You that's all I'm saying. Honey. Yeah, man. It just hurt. It breaks my heart. It and does. I, I and hope then maybe the kids they be would. Right. Maybe. You know, this doesn't, I hope, even though they are divorced, that was a fast divorce, according to what I just read. Jesus Christ. But, you know, maybe they'll find their way, way of back. reconciling or making something that works for them. You know, um, I just read quickly about on, like, June 19th, she just had a medical emergency during an episode, like, may have passed out or something. I just was, you know, and he seemed very stress. concerned. It, she did, did, the article did mention scratch. That, that was from the magazine. Oh. But, you know, but, you know. You know, sometimes, you know, we got to go through certain things and certain valleys because, you know, it's a perfection of ourselves. And, you know, um, I sent you a video a while ago, too, before we wrap up this um, podcast. Um, I sent you a video. This podcast or this topic? This podcast. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Okay. Yeah. Uh, because um, it was this guy, it was this older gentleman that I sent you a video of. I don't know if you watched it because we didn't talk about it. But it was this older gentleman and he he was talking about how, you know, he had an affair on his wife. Did you see it? Probably not. He had an affair on his wife. And the lady that he was having an affair with didn't have any children. And, you know, he thought he was learning who he was. And he was like, you know, he sacrificed all this for his family. And this time he was going to live for himself. You know, woody woo woo. You know, then he ended up divorcing his wife. And his wife, you know, remained single for a while. He um, didn't marry the lady. But they've been together for like two or three years. And then they, then they broke up. And then he just lived alone. And he was just angry. But he lived like down the street from his, from his first wife. I, why, this sounds really familiar. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, after years later, about five years total between the time he left and the time they got back together, like he came to a point where he realized that um, that basically the person he actually was in love with the entire time was his wife. And he was like, we can't get caught up on like uh, like the feeling. I can't I can't explain it like he did. But my whole moral of saying the story was that. He f- he needed to go through what he went through to learn about him. And then his wife graciously, after some time period, because he said he had to work hard, you know, they was able to get back together and remarry. And they was married for over 50-something years, you know, all together. You know, but sometimes, you know, you know, people got to go through whatever it is that they have to go through. Shameless plug. We talked about this. Uh, when you get a chance, episode 69, if you love something 
go after it. Yes. We just talked about this very thing. Yes. Because if he was down the street, yes. he should have took his behind to the house. <laughs> well, he did, but it took him a while because, you know, he had to deal with, you know, being embarrassed and, you know, making hey, that decision. Hey, and guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Oh, it's right here. The reconciliation one I sent guess, you. Guess what? Mm-hmm. When you fall in public, you don't lay down and wait for somebody to pick you up. You hop up? You get up. And you in public. But people that you don't know, we may get some laughs, some stares. You know? Them people don't got to show you grace and you hop right up. How much more you think the person that you actually have a connection with, that you have a relationship or had one with? But you, when you realize how much you hurt somebody, you don't know if they're going to let you back in. And that's where the fight comes in. Yeah. That's where the fight comes in. You can sit in self-pity. Mm-hmm. Or... You can allow that hurt that you know drive you to do better for yourself and for others. So he should have went down that street. He did. <laughs> it took him a while. He should have went down that street. Yes, he was straight a good up. parent. Well, I didn't get to play the church organ for you. I had that thing queued up and ready. No, that's okay. <laughs> but yeah, so I just wish the best for that family, the Daenerys. De- Babe, the look, oh, what, I done took the thing off the screen. You don't Doubling know that name. down names. with the Doricos. I said it right that time. You a doctor. Doricos. D- <laughs> <laughs> what? That's what helped me remember. <laughs> that's you got to put that. Yeah, yeah. because I'm going to say Daenerys. Oh, you know why? Because Daenerys Pizza. That's what I keep thinking about. What is Daenerys Pizza? It's a pizza in Azalea. There's a thing called Daenerys? Yes. Girl, I don't know about them people. Am I pronouncing it wrong? You <laughs> always pronounce something wrong. It is the narrows. Unifoil? It is unifoil. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust nobody that says aluminum foil. It took her years to say aluminum foil. My mom right? said unifoil. You said it too. Yeah. But I think this was a really, 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 really good conversation. Yes. And I and the passion that you were speaking, honey, is because we really do believe in marriage, you know, and it's just from our life testimony and itself. Yeah. You know, um, you know, looking forward to getting past the twenty five hump. Boy, I got you know, some everything the forties, fifties, sixties. Funny and then we'll get off. So we were in the car it was me, John John and Elena. And we were talking about something, and John, well, John, John said, "I hope that happens." And I said, "Me too." And cross your fingers. We hope. And then Lena said, "No, Daddy, you can't cross both fingers because that's bad luck and cancel it out." <laughs> I said, "What?" She said, "Yeah, you're not supposed to cross both." <laughs> I said, "Man, I never heard that before. You ever heard that?" No. I, I said, "Lena, I have been crossing both fingers. <laughs> my leg when I cross my she fingers. Said, cancel out. It makes She's, sense though." <laughs> <it makes> sense. <laughs> I didn't want to tell her that because I don't want to give her that. But she, it makes sense. You can't slow down. It makes sense. Yeah, Kids that keep was, you young. Yeah, that, that, that was funny. So, But yeah, I think this was a good one. Yeah. You got so anything else to say? I have nothing to say. Well, we appreciate y'all for being on just like all the other times. From us to y'all. Peace. peace.